Calculations, Analysis, and Conclusion. We want to calculate the height of the stomp rocket in the air, which we'll call x. However, all equations that have an x in them need the initial velocity of the stomp rocket. So here's v0, here's v0, here's v0. Everybody needs it. So we have to calculate v0 first. We'll use the first kinematics equation here to calculate v0 because this is the only one without a distance in it. The peak of the rocket's flight is the apex. We'll use the subscript apex to denote variables that occur at the peak of the path. The time that it takes the rocket to reach the apex is half of the total time the rocket is in the air. Now we're drawing the pictures like this, but in reality we want the rocket to come str go straight up and come straight down. But this makes it a little easier to see what's going on. But again, please shoot the rocket straight up. We do not know the launch speed, v0, or the landing speed, vf, and of course the speed is the same taking off and landing. So we're going to simplify the problem to just the first half of the rocket's flight. So where it leaves the ground and when it hits the apex point. We know that at the top of the flight the rocket's velocity is zero, so v apex is zero. We also know, or we postulated and actually is true, that t apex is half of the total time. And we're ignoring air friction there, which would change that result. And also, this means that it has to take off and land at the same point to have it, that symmetry. And then we have a, the acceleration due to gravity, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We can now fill in some more information on our slide. Right here, the t apex line, the equation is t apex equals half of our total time. Here's where we had the total time, so we just cut those in half and we get 6 seconds and 4 seconds. The velocity at the apex is going to be 0 for all of our trials. Then the acceleration of the rocket, since it's in free fall once it takes off from the launcher, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We will use the first kinematics equation to solve for v0. So we start with the equation here. We subtract at from both sides, and we get v0 is equal to v minus at. Well, what is v at the, at the apex? Well, it's 0. So that gets rid of what term? This term here. So we now have v0 equals minus at, and at the apex our time is time apex. So our equation is v0 equals minus a times time at the apex, and time at the apex is half of the total time. We can now fill in another row in our data table, the v0. The equation we use is v0 equals minus a times t apex, and where's t apex? That's this row. We multiply by this row and take the negative because it's negative times a t apex, and we have negative 6 times a negative 9.8 is 58.8 meters per second for the rocket shot by Maya and the other rocket is 39.2 meters per second. We now have the initial velocity and we will move on to the second kinematics equation. We'll continue using only the first half here of the rocket's path because that's where you find your highest height anyway, right? The first half it goes up then it comes down. And just to uh, say it again, hopefully you're going straight up and straight down. Here's our second kinematics equation. We're going to say we start from the ground and we're going to say x0 equals 0 or exactly where the rocket leaves the launcher and then hopefully you timed from the spot where it left the launcher to where it passed it again at the bottom. But in either case we'll say that that is 0. So our equation simplifies to this then our time is the time at the apex at its maximum. So x is equal to v0 t apex plus one half a t apex squared. We can now fill in the last row in our calculations here by using this equation that was derived on the previous page. And what do we have to put in? We need v0, that's over here, t apex, that's over here, which is half of the total time, and the a, of course, is the negative g. 
So please verify that these numbers come out. Maya's goes to 176.4 meters. Again, that took off with the faster speed, so you'd expect it to go higher. And Sami's goes to 78.4 meters. This lab does not have a major analysis section. And there are certainly some sources of error, but most of these are disregarded. And why are they disregarded? It's beyond the scope of the course to calculate the errors, so it won't be the most accurate uh, lab. The stop rocket will certainly experience air resistance during its flight. Also, the wind may blow the rocket off of a direct path up and down. Students may realize there is error in using the stopwatches with time measurements. And each student may stop on the rocket with a different amount of force, therefore each flight will have a different maximum height and initial velocity. And if you're just using a tennis ball and throwing it up in the air, the same thing applies here. We can also find the final velocity of the stomp rocket as it hits the ground. We've already said that it's the same, you have the same magnitude, the same speed hitting the ground as it goes up, but let's see what the calculations say. First we're going to start with V0, and V0 is minus A times T total over 2. We've already showed that earlier, and that's the apex time right there. Now we'll calculate the final velocity of the stomp rocket as it hits the ground. We're going to use first kinematics again, and we know that this is V0. We calculated that earlier. It's minus A times T total over 2. We substitute that in right there. We get this expression. We carry out the algebra, and we find V, which is our final velocity when they hit the ground, is A times T total over 2. So you want to compare these two, and what do you notice? Hopefully, V is equal to negative V0. Same magnitude, different direction. We can now use the second kinematics equation to show the position of the rocket at t total, and hopefully that shows that it's back on the ground. So here's our second kinematics equation. We substitute in our initial velocity and our initial position, and we want to find the final position. So we put these two values in for here and here, and that's this line here. We carry out the algebra, and what happens with these two? They sum up to zero. So yes, we do wind up at the place we started according to the calculations. We were able to find the initial velocity and the height of the stomp rocket by just measuring the time it took to go up and then come back down due to the fact that the acceleration due to gravity near the surface of the Earth, which is where we are, is constant. And knowing either the time of flight or the maximum height enables us to calculate the other variable.